good morning YouTube. <laughs> Taking my alternate route to work again because of all the construction around here. And uh, as you can see it's gloomy and overcast. Uh, it's still before the sun comes up but with all this cloud cover it uh, it's really dispersing the light from the horizon around everywhere else. I, I still have my headlight on, but I probably actually don't need it. I just saw this light turn green for nobody, and I think it's going to turn red before I get there. No? It turned green just for me? <laughs> well, that was a nice treat. <laughs> Beat the hell out of waiting at him. I've been concerned. I'm coming up on my on my little road trip. I'm going to do some camping off of the motorcycle up in uh, Pine Top, and I do have a cabin reserved up there as well. Uh, but at the very least, that first night I get up there, I'm gonna I'm gonna be sleeping on the ground. Uh, down here in Tucson, uh, we're about we're typically about 30, 40 degrees warmer than than Pine Top, and down here today it's going to hit and top out. Somewhere around 72, 73. It's been the weirdest spring I've experienced yet in Tucson. Uh, and rain seems to be rolling through the area every weekend. And uh, lots of cloud cover. And the temperatures, we, we really haven't broken, I think, 96 degrees. And that was just one day. So I'm not complaining for the riding weather here in Tucson, but I'm starting to get a little concerned because when this rain blows through Tucson this weekend, uh, they're going to be getting more snow on the ground up at Pine Top. But more importantly, I know I'm not used to having snow <laughs> or sleeping in snow. So uh, a little bit of trepidation, but I have faith that the desert will warm up before I leave. lights are changing for me this morning which is a nice treat it's kind of funny I got out a little early this morning um, and, and it's interesting because most of the time leaving early riding through town uh, sometimes doesn't this time of day doesn't net you any extra time how do I how do I phrase this or so typically when I come to work earlier than the rest of most people in the city, the traffic lights, I have to stop at every single traffic light because I'll be the one actuating the, um, the sensor. But just like this, where other people are ahead of me on days when I'm more or less riding with traffic, uh, other people are there to sort of trip the sensors. So my light, my wait at the traffic lights usually aren't as long if there is any at all. If they don't just roll before I get there. This arrow has a, a lengthy run sometimes. I wonder if I'll be able to make it. Looks like it. Was another example. So sometimes leaving that <clears throat> 20 minutes early doesn't always work out for you just because you'll end up having to trip all the lights yourself. And what's so funny about that is that even though you left early, sometimes you're it, sticks, it actually takes you longer to get to work. Uh, the last time I did this, I was kind of impressed by the ability of the GoPro to pull light from the sky. So the sun is still below the horizon over there, but on the GoPro, it's going to look really bright, like it's already up. And then with this cloud cover, it's, it's, like, a, it's like a diffuser and just spreads the light out across the sky. But as you can see, all the street lights are still on. You should be able to see that. All the street lights are still on. I think you can still see my headlight on the cars in front of me. So I'd say if this video looks as good as I think it's going to, that's actually a testament to the Hero 3 Plus Black's ability to, 
to auto adjust for for the light. <laughs> Holy crap! Well, good afternoon, YouTube. You saw what it looked like going to work on a nice cloudy morning, <laughs> and this is what it looks like driving home. Oh, it's getting ready to snow in the mountains and we're getting ready to get rain down here now normally I'm excited about that kind of weather especially this late in the year we don't normally get it but it's so close to my camping trip up at Pine Top above 7,000 feet elevation and they're gonna get another dusting of snow this weekend and then I plan on going up there the next weekend so uh, <laughs> yeah Wow, the wind blowing this storm in is insane. So just covering a couple of things that I need to do this week prior to my camping trip here. So I'm going to be going over all of my camping equipment. I'm going to practice loading it on the bike and unloading it off the bike. I'll be practice riding it around on the bike. I'm going to be installing a 12 volt charger. I already have one underneath the seat and I'm thinking that's where I'm going to keep the uh, GoPro charger. So I'm going to plug the GoPro charger in there, rotate batteries uh, out as needed, and always have a fresh supply. And that'll be under the seat, not anything I have to carry on me. And I'm going to put a 12 volt charger up here on top. Well, a 12 volt outlet, probably going to go about right there. And that will be for my uh, for my cell phone here because my cell phone's going to double as my internet connection whenever I get to various places, and it's going to also be my well my communication device uh, plus my GPS when needed. I know my route fairly well. I can do it without any maps or anything, but I want to have the GPS feature handy. And if I need to run it with the screen up for any length of time, it'll kill the battery. So, might as well have a source up here for it to warm up on. So, there's packing up my tent, packing up my uh, sleeping bag and my sleeping pad, my self-inflatable sleeping pad. Camping up, or packing up my stove, a couple changes of clothes. I'm not going to bother packing any food, just a little bit of water. Food, I figure I ought to be able to come by. Uh, just stopping somewhere and picking some up wherever I get to a new town. But that first night looks like it's going to be a cold one. Because up at uh, Sholo and Fool Hollow Lake, it has yet to get above 60 degrees yet so far this season. And normally this time of year, their highs are mid to upper 70s. So, <laughs> ought to be interesting. They're getting snow tonight and uh, their lows have still been dropping down to the freezing level. And my sleeping bag is good down to 20 uh, but you know I think that's more for comfort that's not necessarily for or I should say that's more for survival not necessarily for comfort so I'll take some sleeping bag warmers with me uh, those that's those little sand filled uh, heat packs that you know when you when you unseal them from their plastic container they, they get warm when they hit air so I'll toss uh, two or three of those in my sleeping bag before I climb in and uh, let my sleeping bag get all toasty. My blubbery insulative layer ought to protect me well too, but my major concern is actually getting up in the morning and having to ride around on icy roads or cold tires. That's that's really what I don't look forward to. So if it's still getting dropping down into the freezing mark uh, at nights up there, it's very possible that in the early mornings there could still be uh, ice on the overpasses and things like that. So yeah, uh, preparing for all of that. Uh, the good news is I think they've had enough moisture up there that there's not going to be any fire restrictions. So I'll be able to have a nice little campfire. I know there's a Walmart there and whoa, bird. <laughs> so I should be able to stop and pick up a little bit of firewood because you cannot harvest from the site. So part of packing and unpacking, setting up my tent is making sure I know how to do it. So in case I get there late and it's in the dark, I know how to do it. I'm familiar with all the pieces. And it's been a while since I took that tent camping. And then on top of that is practicing packing things onto this bike and taking them off of this bike. And then riding the bike too and 
checking it out for its uh, different riding characteristics once it's laden down with all my gear. I don't plan on taking a whole lot, but this bike is pretty light and I think nearly anything will change its riding characteristics as a result. So I plan on filling up both panniers uh, as, as much as I can with the heavy stuff uh, to try and keep the weight down low. And then I'll have a small tail bag sitting on the luggage rack and then I will have my, uh, my tent and my sleeping bag and bedroll sitting on the pillion seat behind me sort of strapped to that tail bag. And those aren't really heavy. I think together the tent and because I'm going to pull the stakes out and all the heavy stuff and throw them in one of the panniers. So the tent and the sleeping bag together maybe eight pounds. Nine pounds maybe. Anyhow, I'm going to pack that stuff up. Pack it on the bike how I like it. And ride around with it here in town so I get an idea what the riding characteristics are going to be like. So I know what to expect on the day of when I depart Tucson. And then all will be good. So that's what my weekend's going to be full of. Uh, in order to install that 12 volt up here, I've got to hook up the, uh, the sub harness. So I've ordered that part and getting ready to do that. Uh, and that allows me to have extra 12 volt accessories coming straight off the switched harness uh, with a relay built in, a real powerful relay, so everything should be good. And in doing that, if I want to later on add things like uh, riding lights or something like that, I can. And uh, that's a really safe way to do it. It plugs into all the factory outlet at that point, so no hack jobs, no splicing wires and things of that nature. Worst part, we'll be having to strip down the uh, fairing on this bike. Just because you got to take off nearly all of the uh, of the Tupperware to make that happen. So we'll see how it goes. Anyhow, as I look forward to my trip, I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye.